Welcome back, math people of YouTube. Today I present to you this ridiculously awesome integral. I mean, just look at this thing. This is awesome. We have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of zeta 1 plus e to the i theta d theta, where zeta is, of course, the Riemann zeta function. So this thing looks awesome. The solution development is extremely satisfying. It is beautiful. And the final result is almost too good to be true. Enough hyping it up, time to actually solve this thing, and the most logical way of starting the solution development should be to take this e to the i theta function and call it equal to the new variable z. So on differentiating, we have i times e to the i theta d theta equal to dz, and this implies that d theta equals dz divided by i times e to the i theta, but wait, e to the i theta is our z variable, so we have d theta transforming into dz divided by i times z, which is pretty cool. But what about the limits of integration? Well, if you, if you take a look at this equation, the equation relating z to the theta variable, we see that theta is the argument of the z variable. And theta is bound between 0 and 2 pi, which means that the argument of our z variable is bound between 0 and 2 pi. So we've gone from integrating over a line segment from 0 to 2 pi to integrating over a circular path, which is awesome. Now, what exactly is the radius of that circle? We have e to the i theta equal to z. So taking absolute values, we find that the radius here should be equal to 1. Okay, cool. So we've translated our integral into a contour integral, which is extremely cool. So we're on the right track. I here is now the integral over the unit circle centered at the origin of zeta. That's a horrible looking zeta. That's much better. 1 plus e to the i theta, which is our z variable. And we have this factor of i times z in the denominator because of the differential element. And this factor of 1 over i is just a constant, so I'm running it outside the integration operator. And this is pretty easy to evaluate because all we need is Cauchy's residue theorem. So the integral over the closed contour equals 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of our function that is terribly sorry about that. The zetas are only getting worse, not better. Oh, that's much better. Zeta 1 plus z divided by z. And to answer the question of where exactly are the residues and which ones are enclosed by our contour, we need the Laurent series expansion for the zeta function, which I should probably prove in a future video. So yeah, that's one more thing added to my to-do list. We have a pretty cool looking Laurent series, and that's zeta... 1 plus z equal to 1 over z plus the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times these constants that are called Stilgius constants, gamma sub k, times z to the k divided by k factorial. And of course, we need to expand this by 1 over z. So we have zeta 1 plus z divided by z equal to 1 over z squared plus the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times gamma sub k z to the k minus 1 divided by k factorial. And we see that there is only one pole to worry about, and that is the one at z equal to 0. We see that this is a pole of order 2. So this implies that the target integral i equals the i's cancelled out, so we have 2 pi times the residue of zeta, terribly sorry about that, zeta 1 plus z divided by z at z equal to 0, which by virtue of being a pole of order 2 is calculated as follows. We need the derivative with respect to z of z squared times our function, that's zeta 1 plus z divided by z, evaluated at z equal to 0. So there is some cancellation here. And evaluating the derivative using the product rule, we have 
z times zeta prime times 1 plus z. So yeah, this is just getting cooler and cooler times the zeta function at 1 plus z. And we're interested in the case of z being equal to 0. And to evaluate all this, again, we need the Laurent series for the zeta function, which comes in absolutely clutch in this context. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we need zeta prime times z. So we'll differentiate this to get zeta prime. Okay, that just looks absolutely horrible. Zeta prime of 1 plus z equal to negative 1 by z squared plus the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times gamma sub k times k times z to the k minus 1 on differentiating divided by k factorial. And note that because we have a factor of k now, for the case of k equal to 0, we have a 0 term. So this implies that z times zeta prime at 1 plus z actually equals negative 1 by z plus the sum over k, terribly sorry about that, the sum over k now from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times k times gamma sub k times z to the k divided by k factorial. Okay, cool. So we have one Laurent series expansion here, and for the other term, we have this Laurent series expansion here, and we just need to add them up. So I'll call this thing A, I'll call this thing B, and we have A plus B terms being added up to give Okay, so we have 1 by z and negative 1 by z, so they just cancel out quite brilliantly. See, I told you it will, it will come in clutch. So that means we're left with the sum over k from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times k times gamma sub k z to the k divided by k factorial plus the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times gamma sub k, z to the k divided by k factorial. And from this sum, I would like to single out the k equal to 0 term, which is negative 1 to the 0, which is 1. Gamma sub 0 is the euler mascheroni constant. Gamma sub 0 equals euler mascheroni constant. That is a very, very cool statement in itself, gamma sub 0. And we have z to the 0, again, being equal to 1, divided by 0 factorial, which is 1. So this looks absolutely awesome, and we're interested in the limiting case of z going to 0. So the limit as z approaches 0 of zeta 1 plus z plus zeta time, uh, plus z times zeta prime of 1 plus z equals the euler mascheroni constant. This is absolutely beautiful. And now for the integral. Ladies, gentlemen, children of all ages, wizards, hobbits, elves, dwarves, and even balrogs, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, terribly sorry about that, much better, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of zeta, can't I get a proper zeta, okay, that looks pretty good, zeta of 1 plus e to the i theta d theta equals 2 pi times the Euler Mascheroni constant. This is one of the most beautiful results I've derived here on the channel. This is awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I hope you learned something from the video. Thank you. See you next time.